Toby the Tram Engine is the seventh book of the Railway series. Written by Wilbert Audrey and illustrated by Clarence Reginald Dalby, it was first published in 1952. Thirty-two years later, three of the book's four short stories were adapted into three short episodes during the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. How faithful were these adaptations? Let's see if we can spot the differences. The book introduces Toby, the wooden steam tram, who works on his own branch line with his coach Henrietta. There is a line of dialogue not added to the episode where Toby justifies why he brings Henrietta everywhere with him, regardless that the lack of passengers means she is not needed. You never know. She might come in useful. One day. A main difference in location is that Toby is shown working on the Arsdale Line, which is located on the island of Sodor. But according to the lore of the Railway series, Toby's branch line is in England. A big blunder in the adaptation is that before even meeting Sir Topham Hatt, Toby already has a number 7 painted onto his sides. Speaking of the Fat Controller, the stout gentleman's identity is explained to us in the episode, but not in the book. He was of course the Fat Controller, but Toby didn't know this yet. It is stated, in the book only, that people often laugh at Toby. Oh, isn't he quaint? Oh, yes. When the tram engine meets Sir Topham Hatt and his grandchildren, they are all in the middle of a village, surrounded by houses, shops, and cars. In the adaptation, the characters meet at Arsdale Station. Is it electric? asked Bridget. Hush! hissed Toby. Shh, shh! said her brother. You've offended him. An amusing moment not included into the episode is that the guard is so surprised by the stout gentleman's order to stop that the whistle falls out of his mouth. When Sir Topham Hatt politely thanks Toby for the ride, the station they have arrived at is a lot larger in Dalby's illustration. Now, this gentleman is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. After visiting the tram engine every day for two weeks, the family's holiday comes to an end. It is said in the book's narration that the stout gentleman gave Toby's crew a present. In the episode, it is only said that he said thank you to them. Months later, with less and less business gained, Toby's manager shuts down the branch line. Although there is still a crowd of people seen at the platform, in the book there are so many that they fill up two trucks and Henrietta. In the illustration, a wreath has been placed above Toby's face. This rather morbid touch was replaced by farewell Toby posters around the platform. Oh dear, Toby thought, and went on happily to sleep. The next morning, his driver and fireman are so excited that they are both dancing. As this was naturally not possible for the wooden models to do, they don't move in the adaptation. <laughs> In addition to some trucks, Thomas is also pulling Annie and Clarabel, despite them not being mentioned or shown in the book. The policeman is referred to as large, i.e. chubby, in both sources, but his model is just as thin and as tall as Thomas's crew. The reason the policeman was sitting near to the track is only explained in the book. He was shaking a stone out of his boot. Where's your cow catcher, huh? I don't catch cows, sir. Don't you try to be funny with me, young fella, me lad. An error in the adaptation is that the policeman is shown to have written a regular lawbreaker in his notebook well before it is said he did so. Then that makes it worse, don't it? Thomas puffed sadly away. The layout of the Fat Controller's dining room looks rather different to how it appears in Dalby's illustration. The show's set designer gave the room a large, low-hanging chandelier, blue curtains instead of yellow-ish ones, 
The table has no tablecloth, and the walls are bare wood instead of painted dark green. Thomas is in trouble with the police. I must go down at once. It is said that Sir Topham Hatt quickly finished his coffee before leaving, but he does not do this in the episode. In the book, the Fat Controller meets Thomas and his crew at the junction, where they take him to see the policeman at the other end of the tank engine's branch line. As he argues with the officer, a crowd starts to gather, and so do more policemen. In the episode, the policeman is already at Ellsbridge Station when Sir Topham Hatt meets Thomas, and apart from James, no one else approaches the four men. The law is the law, and that's that. The conversation continues at the station, where in front of the policeman, Thomas unintentionally reminds the Fat Controller about Toby. Although the location change is not mentioned in the narration, in Dalby's illustration, the short scene takes place at Thomas's small Farquhar shed, where the policeman is not present. We will have to make one of those cow-catcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir. They'll say that I look like a tram. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of that before? We want a tram engine. When Toby arrives with Henrietta, Lower Tidmouth Station is on the opposite side to where it is in the illustration. Also, there are several people on Lower Tidmouth platform, including a policeman. But in the adaptation, only Sir Topham Hatt is seen at the platform. I see you brought Henrietta with you. Oh, you, you don't mind, sir, do you? But the station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do, sir. Ugh, what dirty objects. I'm a splendid engine, you see, ready for anything. You never see my paint dirty, oh no. The narration in the episode gives an additional clarification to the bootlace incident that causes the thorn in James's tender. It was such an insult to be reminded of the time a bootlace had been used to mend a hole in his coaches. The train the Red Engine brings to the station are the dark green and light yellow branch line coaches, rather than the orange ones he was pulling in the illustration. The other differences, via Dalby's work and the adaptation, are that the trucks and coaches are placed on the opposite side, and that James looks only slightly miffed that he has to shunt the goods train, instead of very cross, which he clearly appears to be in the episode. Dirty trucks from dirty sidings. Ugh. I hate them. In the book, James crosses a viaduct just before he begins puffing up Gordon's Hill. The viaduct is not seen or mentioned in the episode. I've got to stop! I've got to stop! I've got to stop! The runaway train's guard applies the brake van's brakes, but they are still going far too fast. The guard's attempt to stop the train was not added to the episode. James crashes into four tar wagons, despite the narrator's claim of there being only two, parked just outside of Marin Station. There are only two wagons seen in the illustration, and they were more suitably located in the yard. Furthermore, instead of coloured black, the wagons are silver. Percy and Toby come to help clear up the wreckage. The tram engine is directly behind Percy, but in the episode they arrive separately, and are side by side. An engine resembling Thomas can be seen at the head of the breakdown train, but his presence was not mentioned by the narrator. Look here, Percy. Whatever is that dirty object there? Oh, uh, that's James, Toby. Didn't you know? It's James's shape, all right, but James is a splendid red engine, and you never see his paint dirty, do you? In the adaptation, the tar-covered engine is facing the other way around. In the book, when Toby asks if Henrietta can be given a fresh coat of paint, the Fat Controller agrees, adding she will be painted brown like Annie and Clarabelle. This was possibly an error by the author, as Thomas's coaches are orange, or at least a very light brown. Speaking of colour, from this story forward, Toby's paint is a darker shade of brown, and his side plates are dark blue. 
the tram engine was never given such a colour upgrade in the TV series. The book's fourth and final story, Mrs. Kindly's Christmas, was never adapted for Thomas and Friends. Though the scenario, in which an elderly lady manages to prevent Thomas from crashing into a landslide, was referenced in the final episode of the show's first season, Thomas's Christmas Party, which was based on a book that the Reverend Audrey had written specifically for this television series in 1984.